I have two edits and a transition that need templating up and sending on. It's just two layers parented to this shape. Now both edits and the transition point will change further down the line. This is a simplified version, but rather than the user expected to know which layers to select and move them around to the correct edit point, we are just gonna add a marker and everything will update automatically. Let's start with a simple expression. We'll start with our transition move here, as we called it. So we'll option click on the stopwatch to create an expression, and then we'll turn on the graph editor to see what's going on. Click on this little icon to see the expressions update. And also if we right mouse button click, we want this show expressions. A gentle start, select all of that and type in this property. Pretty self-explanatory and then we'll type dot value at time. And in this little bracket, we'll just write in the word time. That's pretty straightforward and nothing has changed because we're just referencing the position at which the keyframes are. But if we put in time, let's say minus one, you'll see the keyframes have jumped a second down the timeline. So if we would change one with two, it'll be two seconds down the timeline. So if we type in 2.5, you get the idea with that. I prefer to work in frames. Let's create a new variable. And we use the frames to time function. Let's type in something like 20 here. Copy and paste that into there. And now we should see our offset is now 20 frames. Let's slap a marker in there. So I'm gonna F2 to deselect everything because we're gonna put it at the comp level. I'm gonna move the timeline to about, uh, let's say three seconds here, and then I'm gonna option star numpad, which straight away brings up this marker comment box, and I'm gonna write cut. And this will be the point at which our transition will happen. We'll add this cut marker to our expression. So we'll select our animation, and now we'll add a variable, and we'll call this one transition. So that's the name of our variable, and we'll type in this comp dot marker, dot key and in this bracket we'll type in cut between two quotes because that's the name of our marker and then we'll simply add dot time on the end and the time simply refers to the point at which this cut marker sits on the timeline nearly there there's just a couple of changes to make so let's add this to our final value so i'm going to copy transition and i'm going to say time minus transition in here Okay, so we can kind of see something's happening. You'll see the transition move, but obviously it's in the wrong place. So the quick fix to this is to take those keyframes and move them right to the beginning of the timeline. So now our animation starts bang in sync with this cut marker here. Let's change it so the transition finishes at this cut point. Now if I command click on this time here, it will convert to frames. And nudging forward, I can see that it's 21 frames exactly. In fact, a quick tip, if you look at the info window here, so it's a little bit fiddly, make sure this blue line is around your timeline first. Option key down, click on the first frame, keep your finger on the option key, click on the second frame, and it tells you duration between keyframes. It's definitely a bit fiddly. Since we've already written this bit, it's 21 frames, so I'm gonna change that from 20 to 21. And I'm gonna subtract that from my transition. So I could do it up here, but I could also, in fact, let's put this in brackets, minus the transition offset, close those brackets. So that should jump back 21 frames and the transition ends bang on that cut point. We'll take it one stage further because it's pointless adding this cut point if we have to adjust the point at which this starts each time. Let's automate that now. So what I'm gonna do is go back to this expression here, select it and copy it, close it up. Edit two, I'm gonna move straight to the beginning of the timeline and I'm gonna enable time remapping. Now the shortcut for that is option command T on the Mac. We're gonna add an expression to this. So option clicking on the stopwatch and we're gonna paste and that's all we're gonna do. So now, moving this marker around, everything should be in sync. Now, if you're templating this up to pass on to somebody else, you'll definitely want to add some error capturing. Because if somebody deletes this cut marker, you're going to get a lot of errors. However, if you're a designer like me, what you could do is go to the start of the timeline and create a marker there. And in big capital letters, write, do not delete markers 
And to emphasize that point, you could label it red, thereby shirking all responsibility. <laughs> I'm sure we've all seen it done. So final move, let's select all the layers. Press F4 and I'm gonna hide them and lock them. Turn that on there. This void script from Batlax is quite handy. So I'm gonna click on this little void icon here. It's gonna create an empty shape layer. Leave some instructions. And now we are good to send on. <laughs>